Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Crix's Mega EverDrive X3. Let's get started. So if you're not familiar with Crix or the EverDrive, essentially what the EverDrive is, is a cartridge that you can plug a micro SD card into loaded with ROMs to play the ROMs directly from the cartridge on your system. Now this is specifically for the Sega Genesis. They also have other versions out there. Ones for the Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo. They have a bunch of different products out there and I highly recommend checking them out. Now if you're wondering what the X3 means, you can see it right here, X3. What that is, is that's the model number. There are different models of the Mega EverDrive. You can see them on the screen right here, X3, X5, X7, and the unreleased Mega SD. Each of these do different things. I just have the base X3. If you want more features, you have to upgrade, for example, to the X5 or X7, and they will cost you accordingly. There's a very big price jump between the X3 at $48.99 starting to the X7 at $165.99. Mind you, you do get goodies like save states. Also, in the unreleased Mega SD, you can see Sega CD compatibility. But for me, my needs are very simple. I'm happy right now with just loading up some ROMs on this and playing them on the Genesis. So I just powered on my Genesis with the Mega EverDrive in it. I didn't really do anything aside from inserting an empty SD card, and I did that for a purpose. If you take a look here, it says there are instructions. It says go to cricks.com, download the latest megaos.zip, create mega folder in the root directory and then put zip content into the mega folder and then obviously you have to put your roms in there all right so heading over to cricks.com i'm gonna head into downloads so i will click on that i can see version 1 x3 x5 and x7 so click x7 then there's also dev os mega everdrive v2 user manual so i want the os and then there are different versions i'm going to go to the latest one here v3.07 and this was january 17th 2019 it was released so i'll just duck my head so you can kind of see it just above me so i'm going to download this it is a whopping 103 kilobyte so it's it's not really very big at all all right so i've opened the zip file i can see the mega folder i'll follow the instructions to the t and put that right into the micro sd card so now that it's on my sd card just a simple drag and drop i'm going to open the mega folder and i'm going to create a brand new folder so i'll do a brand new folder here and i'm going to call it games and then in this folder you can create multiple folders if you would like it's all up to you if you just want to stockpile all of your games into one folder, that's fine. If you want to organize it by uh, letter or genre, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to plow in a bunch of games right into this games folder. So once your ROMs are on, you can pretty much just eject your micro SD card from the computer, load it up in the EverDrive, and you should be good to go. Now I've put on a few different ROMs to see what happens. Uh, first and foremost, I did put on a 7-zip ROM. It's zipped inside a 7-zip folder. This one probably is not going to work. I've also put in a zip folder, NHL 94. This one is also probably not going to work. From my understanding, you do have to unzip all of your ROMs that you plan on using. The other games I'm going to try out are Eternal Champions, NHL 94, one of the best games on the system, uh, Toe Jam and Earl, and a Street Fighter 2 Sega Master System game. All right, so I'm booting up the Cricks again in the Genesis. Uh, settings were reset to default. Press any key to continue. No problem. So you can see the mega directory. So I'll open that. And to open that, I'm just pressing, here's my controller. I'm using a Genesis 6 button controller. I'm just hitting the A button right here. All right, so you can see my folder that I have titled games. So the first thing I'm gonna to try to do is open the seven zip folder. ROM file must be unzipped. So just as I previously said, it holds true. Uh, let's try NHL94.zip. Again, ROM file must be unzipped. So if you are putting ROMs on the Mega EverDrive, make sure to unzip them. So I'm gonna boot up Eternal Champions here. Select and start, select only, cheats, ROM config, and hex view. I'm gonna see what ROM config does. Okay, so it's just telling me information about the ROM here. Uh, if I go into cheats, Look at the Game Genie cheats. This is exciting. I'm not gonna put anything in right now. I'm just gonna go select and start. 
So it's booting everything up. I do have the sound muted uh, for um, various purposes, <laughs> I'll say. Uh, so everything looks okay. I'll just go ahead and hit start. So we've got a one player. Uh, go to fight. Enter contest. Yep, everything seems to be loading up just fine, booting just fine. Um, I really don't see too much of an issue. So the way this works is that you're not actually playing an emulator, you're playing the actual game. It's just playing through the EverDrive. So it should run exactly the same, and I mean exactly the same here, as if I were to plug in Eternal Champions, the official game, right into my system. All right, so I'm gonna change games. All you have to do is hit the reset button on the Genesis. Once you hit the reset, it brings you back to the main menu. So now let's try out NHL 94. All right, so this time I will hit A and hit select and start. And this should boot up NHL 94 here. All right, so I have NHL 94 loaded up. Everything looks good. Uh, so this one's loading up just fine. I don't see any issues so far. Yeah, everything seems absolutely fine here. Next up, I'll try Toe Jam and Earl. So Toe Jam and Earl is playing well. I don't really see uh, any sort of issue whatsoever. Uh, just like NHL 94 and Eternal Champions, there wasn't really any delay in the game. They ran pretty much the same as the cartridge. And now we'll try a Sega Master System game. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I actually haven't even tested this off camera yet. So this is a live first test and see if it works. So now I'm getting no signal. Oh, no, it's working. So I thought we lost signal there for a second, but it doesn't look like it. So if I go to uh, game start, it's working. This is definitely Street Fighter on the Sega Master System. All right, so I can't pause uh, in this game at all. Neither of the controllers work for pause. And the buttons for punch and kick, I was just fiddling around here. Uh, B is punch and C is kick. So it's just a two button fighter on the Sega Master System. Uh, I can't even get out a fireball. I don't even know if there are special moves. Uh, I can't do a dragon punch, can't do a fireball, can't do a tatsu. So uh, it's pretty bare bones, but it does work. Uh, for other sake, what I'll do is put in a different game and see if it works a little better. So I put Outrun on another Sega Master System game. I completely forgot how bad Street Fighter 2 for Sega Master System was. Uh, it is just a two-player game. Unfortunately, it's just me, so I don't have a second player to test it out. And on top of that, most of the game is cut. So the special moves and stuff, it's really bare bones. Uh, so let's just try Outrun here uh, and see if that's a little better. So it looks like I do lose signal before the game starts for some reason. And just so you're all aware, I do have my Genesis hooked up to a retro tink into my Elgato. So that's how I'm capturing the footage right now. All right, so I have Outrun up and running. Uh, this is the Sega Master System version of Outrun, so it is a very stripped down version. Uh, it's pretty bare bones if you can take a look at it. It is running well though, so the X3 is having no issues with this uh, Sega Master System game. It had no issues with Street Fighter 2, although Street Fighter 2 is very limited in what you can do. Uh, everything looks okay, so I'm pretty happy with things. All right, so the Mega EverDrive is available on Amazon.com for $54, and that's the exact one that I have here. It's also available on Stone Age Gamer. I'm gonna leave a link to both of these in the description below. You can actually pick it up for slightly cheaper at Stone Age Gamer for $48.99. You can also get it in some funky colors. So if you buy it on Amazon, it's 54. Uh, if you're looking at getting something, for example, like Atomic Purple here, it's gonna cost you basically an extra five bucks. So do I think this is worth a buy? Absolutely, yes. If you're looking at just playing ROMs, then definitely check out the X3. It'll do pretty much anything you need it to do in terms of just playing the ROMs. If you want all the bells and whistles, you can definitely check out the X5 or X7. Uh, it all depends on what you're looking for, but for $48.99, this is a really good buy. I will say that Crix did provide me this for review purposes, so this was provided to me, but at $48.99, I can still recommend it for that price, especially considering it's just one cartridge to do pretty much everything. You don't have to worry about plugging in each individual game. 
which can be a hassle. You can just really use one cartridge and you're good to go. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, and let me know what you think about the EverDrive in the comments below. Thank you everyone, take care.